In today's video, we're covering the top 5 Linux security best practices that every admin should know. First up, let's talk about securing remote access. Secure Shell, or SSH, is the lifeline for Linux admins, but it's also a common target for attackers. Here's a few steps to harden it. You can work with SSH directly in the terminal, simply right click, open in terminal, and we can perform all our SSH operations from within the terminal. If you generate SSH key pairs, which you should be doing, instead of using password authentication, you can simply run the commands in the terminal, for example, SSH, keygen, and then that command, it's generating a public private RSA key pair. This command also takes certain parameters. You can also decide which algorithms, etc., you would like to use. And you can go on and it'll prompt you into where you would like to um, enter which file, which you'd like to save the key, so you can actually create a file which will store the key, etc. So run SSH keygen as the command simply from your terminal and switch to SSH key pairs uh, as opposed to using password authentication. You can then go ahead and copy the public key to your server using the SSH copy ID command. So once again, that's the SSH, and then you just simply have dash copy and then dash ID command when you'd like to copy it. And there I haven't given any, any parameters, but it has brought up the usage with all the available options. Very simple to generate SSH key pairs simply in the command line in the terminal in Linux. Something that you want to do also with SSH is you want to turn off root login. You can do this by editing the SSH config file. So where the SSH config file is located in the Etsy directory. So we can just change directory simply to Etsy. We can ls, we can see everything that's located in Etsy. And we're looking for the Etsy, SSH, and SSHD config. So let's just search for Etsy, SSH. We can just change directory to SSH. Now we're in the Etsy, SSH directory. And when we hit ls, we see that the SSH underscore config file and SSH underscore config dot d files are both available here. You can use your favorite text editor, mine is nano, so I'm going to do sudo. So there's the configuration file, and there's also the directory. You can just type in sudo nano ssh config. When we hit enter, you can see that the ssh configuration file is opened up, and we can go ahead and we can configure our ssh configurations directly from within this file. Another thing that you might want to do is to use a non-default port for Secure Shell. So the default port for SSH is 22. You can change that just by using the configuration file. So we can open it up as we've done using our favorite code or text editor. And you can go ahead and uh, configure a alternative or a non-standard uh, port. So we see here it's port 22. So you could just uncomment that out and change the port which in real time would look like this. Just uncomment, so I'm removing that, and I could just take make that port. I could use an ephemeral port, so 8900, for example. Now I'm just going to keep it as port 22 on my system, and I'm going to go ahead and yes, save, and X out. You can also add multi-factor authentication to your secure shell, and this can be done using Google Authenticator and another number of third-party tools. And these work seamlessly with Linux. I have made another video and also articles that you can find under our profile in IT Pro Today that go into this. Let's talk about keeping your systems updated. Stay up to date. Vulnerabilities in outdated software are a black hat hacker's playground. So you can automate updates to avoid falling behind. Depending on the distribution that you're using, you can use the available package tool or package management tool to update and you can actually create a cron job and um, write a script to automate this update and there are other ways to automate updates. But say you'd want to update your system, you actually want to update and upgrade. Updating is updating the actual operating system. Upgrading is upgrading all or updating all installed software packages because there might be a vulnerability in one of the software packages so in debian so we're in a debian based system now 
uh, with being Ubuntu, we can simply run the sudo, we use apt, which is the advanced package tool, and we can type update, and then we use the double ampersand, and sudo upgrade, and uh, we can go ahead and just hit the yes flag, and what that's going to do is that's going to update and upgrade, so it's going to update the operating system, and it's also going to upgrade all installed software packages. To automate it, a great tool is something called unattended upgrades. So if you'd like to install unattended upgrades, you can just go ahead and type sudo apt or yum or dnf if you're using Red Hat. Install unattended upgrades. And it will install unattended upgrades for you. The manual pages will give you all the information that you need. Or you can just type in unattended upgrades dash dash help and you'll be able to easily use it. There is also comprehensive documentation available online or using unattended upgrades for automating the upgrading of your systems. Talk about configuring firewalls. So I've previously done an extensive video on the using the uncomplicated firewall or UFW and IP tables, NF tables. Uncomplicated firewall is a freely available tool so you're going to want to configure your firewall a properly set up firewall blocks unauthorized access before it even reaches your server on debian systems you can just allow use ufw directly from the command line and you, for example you can allow specific traffic with commands like sudo and then you just use the ufw command and then we can allow and for example ssh it's just a there we go rule updated and it's just a example of how you can use UFW in or the uncomplicated firewall. You can configure your firewall directly from within the command line in Linux. And go ahead and check the status of the uncomplicated firewall by just simply typing the sudo UFW status command. The status is inactive. We can simply enable UFW by typing sudo UFW enable see that it is working power is active and enabled on system startup let's go ahead and check using sudo ufw status and we can see that the firewall is active for more control you can configure ip tables or nf tables they are both powerful that they have a steeper learning curve choose what suits your expertise let's talk about implementing access controls you should always follow the least privileged rule to limit what users and processes can do this can be assigned using role-based access control as a best practice and also consider the use of privileged access workstations. You can use sudo in Linux natively to assign administrative sp uh, privileges sparingly. What you'll have to do is edit the sudo file which is found in the Etsy directory to grant specific commands to users. So since we're in the Etsy directory already, we can just change the directory back. Now that I'm in the Etsy directory, I can type in sudo. I use my favorite text or code editor, nano sudoers. And we can see that the sudoers file has been opened and can be edited. You can also leverage tools like SE Linux or AppArmor for mandatory access control. I previously created a video on using AppArmor and I've written extensively on SE Linux. You can find this all in my IT Pro Today profile. These tools help you enforce strict policies on what processes can actually access. Monitor and audit logs. So, syslog is the logging standard that is used for Linux systems. So, Linux logs on a Linux system are found in the var log directory, and you can just simply change directory to var log. Once we're inside var log, you can alice. And here we can see our, all our logs. So here's our auth log, which is for authentication. We have kernel log, which is for all kernel uh, operations or operations that have gone to kernel log. Syslog is basically all system logs and etc. etc. Your log files might be different depending on what distribution that you're using. But essentially, all logs are using the syslog standard and they can be found in the var log directory inside your Linux distribution. And check authentication at var log auth log or var log secure for failed login attempts. So, for example, I would just use cat just to cat auth log, and we can see that all the auth log logs have been 
displayed to the screen. I'm just a cat. I'm concatenating them out to the screen. If I would like to write it to a text file, I could simply type in sudo cat auth log and I could output that into auth.txt. And what that'll do is it'll output and write the output into a text file called auth.txt. Permission denied. If you get this problem, simply change to a root user and you can type in sudo su. And now I'm in the root user. I can clear that up and I can now simply type in my command. And we can see that that's not done. Now we can just go ahead and cat auth.txt and the text file contents will be printed out. And that's how you can easily work with log files inside Linux. We don't want to remain a root user, so we're also going to want to exit this. Do that by using the exit statement, and now we are not a root user anymore. You can use tools like LogWatch or GoAccess to simplify log analysis and spotting of anomalies. And you can also consider using centralized log management tools like Prelog or AlkStack or one of the many SIM or SOAR tools that are available for large infrastructures especially. So also set up alerts for critical events to catch issues early and respond quickly. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Goodbye for now.